Hey, welcome back. Okay, so I think I put the sellsword in a bit of a pickle because I realized after I used my skill that when I push the scoundrel through the border, my skill hits everybody that was next to me. And unfortunately, the sellsword was also next to me. Hence the reason he took trivial damage going through the border, but now the enforcer is gunning for him. But with that being said, uh, the... Uh, the sellsword is, if he dies, he just respawns and we get to use him again. So he's going to go after the enforcer, who does get a pretty good roll here. Oh, he only rolled a two. So we have a ch chance here. So there's five damage and then one. So that's six minus two, that's four damage to the enforcer who has a lot of hit points. So uh, four is not gonna be enough. Uh, and then also uh, I had to go one, two, three, four more energy down to uh, rearm here. So let's do that. And um, I forgot I had an impulse so I could go a whopping two spaces with it, but I will do that. And that lines me up for the Enforcer next turn. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Sellsword just went. Uh, the Merchant is going to respawn. And I'm going to go ahead and respawn him there. And then the Scoundrel respawns there. So, uh, the Enforcer is going to shoot after the Sellsword. The Sellsword does, for his defense, he gets to roll a d12. And uh, the Enforcer is going to roll uh, this for his missile. And since he's only one space away, he also gets to roll... Um, where's the card? He gets a D8. So he's attacking with both. All right. Well, the Sellsword has the best armor possible. And then there's seven damage. So no damage to the Sellsword. We got lucky. All right, well, I forgot to draw the tile, which I'm gonna do uh, way over here. So let's do that. It's gonna be an arrow like this. And we're gonna roll a die, see how much they score. We're only got one point lead over them. So uh, that's an 18, that's two points for them. So they just took the lead over us and they're up to 12. Repair your ship when ice damage is half. Okay, we really need to score some points here. So let's think this through. Um, actually, I think I should have more victory points than I do, but uh, I think I forgot to take some when I killed these ships. But anyways, um, I can't do that at all. I don't have all the gates. I need cargo cubes for that one. Uh, I would have to go to an asteroid, to a planet, then to a nebula, and then to debris. And the problem is, is the planet and the, ast and the debris fields are on the opposite ends. Yeah, just can't do it. Um, yeah, I can't do any of them. All right, so I'm turn starting my turn, and... Uh, we have to do the grab shift. So this is an interesting one. Let's just roll twice and remember the numbers. So an eight and a 17. Okay, so now let's look at the board. I see an eight right here, and then the, I don't see a 17. I see a 16 and an 18. So what's happening is this eight is swapping places with the 18 and we're not, we have to preserve the uh, position. So we just lost the smugglers then as a place to land. Although arguably I have a progress token I can pick up there. And remember, I, that, that's another way to score points and win this game. Also, I can deliver this missile to score a point. So it is now my turn. Everybody is back. Back in black here, and um, uh, 
Should I take out the enforcer or should I take out the scoundrel? The enforcer gives me two points, so I'm going to go take out the enforcer. So I'm going to use my impulse. Remember, I get to, to it refreshes every round. So I'm going to use my impulse. It's only a two. And I'm going to go just one space, like so. And let's light up this enforcer. All right, so we're going to do the blasters first and then the missile if needed. But I think I'm going to need both. So here's for the blaster. Of course he rolls a 12. So uh, that's a one and a four is five. We did a whopping one damage to him. So he's, no, 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 no. That's five, but then we get to add five because of our skill. So that's nine minus four. We just did five damage to him. So he's up to nine overall damage. And then uh, we're gonna roll for the uh, missile. So the missile is a seven because we get to add five and then that's a zero. So seven damage added to the enforcer is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. He's one away. So I'm gonna spend one, two, three energy and use my ability. 13 uh, should be enough. The slow leak ability, of course, is I deal five damage to him. Now I don't hurt um, I don't hurt my uh, cell sword because the cell sword is protected by the planetary shield. He's not considered to be quote next to me anymore. But it's enough. So I just destroyed the enforcer. So the cell sword is going to be fine. And uh, what, what I get for that, the big thing, is I get two points. So we're going to shoot right past him and get on the vent. Tiger's gate is now connected to all other gates, which is good in a way, because that will help us to move across the map a little quicker. Um, we need two more points to win the game. I have two activations, and so uh, let's get her done. So I'm gonna do, uh, the first one's gonna be an engine. And that's a four plus three is seven. So it's not an awful lot, but I think I can do this. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. And then that's a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's not smart. So then I'm going to just cut back four, five, six, go to the missile space and deliver this arms dealer thing. So um, all I have to do is give them my missile outfit, and um, and then I uh, I get seven thousand bucks, and then my bounty goes up. No big deal. Plus I get a victory point for doing the mission. So um, so I sell my missile. And when I give them my missile, this just goes to the disarm. And here's the thing. I got a point for doing that. That part by itself was good, but this 7,000 is another point. And so I'm just going to use my last one to, assuming I roll well enough, and I did, I'm just going to go right into the planet and win in two different ways. The first way I'm going to win is I get a point for this, right? That's going to bring my energy all the way up, and then these two give me a point. The other thing I could do is spend 5,000 to get a point. That's two points. I only needed one more. I got my 15. That was a closer game, uh, but we still won. So this particular one is called... Oh, where's the mission? Fierce Fighter. It's a win. We have 15, they have 12. So that's a plus three for us. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the plus three to all mission rolls. And there you have it. That's another win for the good guys. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so other than, you know, maybe going to that website and checking to see, you know, what kind of scores I need to get to be considered decent at this game, I'm, I'm sort of growing tired of playing this campaign. This is a long campaign. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven wins. I need three more. Uh, the titles one, boy, is that going to be a challenge. Because you got to do it before you score 15 points. And there's only, in 15 points, there's only four titles that actually come out in the game. And you need to score five victory. I think this one's super tough. I really do. Um, this one is going to be based on pure luck on what kind of titles you draw in the beginning of the game. And we could find ourselves starting and finishing, you know, four times in a row within like 20 minutes. You're, you're starting and going through four games just because we're trying to win this one. I think, you know, I don't want to crown myself. You know, I'm doing really well because I'm getting all these wins in a row. But I think these two by themselves could sink me really fast. I can get, I bet I could lose this eight times in a row and still not get five points in one turn. And then this one here, uh, I think I can do three or four times in a row and not win that one. Uh, this one I think I can win. Seven points from missions. Um, I think I can do that one. So uh, that one I'm not as concerned about, but the other two, I am. And uh, how much fun is it gonna be to do those? Like five points in, in the first turn. I don't find that fun. So that's why I'm saying, eh, you know, I'm not real thrilled about it. So I, I, um, I poo-pooed a lot the Lord of the Rings journeys in the Middle Earth, but there's a part of me that wants to try it again. Um, I think I gave it a bad shake the first time around. I did get a few of the rules wrong. I missed a few things. Um, I wasn't paying attention to where I was going as much. Uh, I didn't want to. I, I don't find that to be a fun part of the game. Uh, but I actually want to give it another try. I think Lord of the Rings Journeys of Middle-Earth, um, it's in the middle for me, just like this game is. It's in the middle. This game has far superior components, though, so I enjoy it a bit more. Um, but Lord of the Rings, I do want to play, and I feel like I've played this one quite a bit. My sons want to play this game with me, and I've played this campaign mode so much, I, I fear... Two things are going to happen. Number one, I'm going to blow them out of the water because I've gotten really good at scoring points. Um, and so I'm no longer just enjoying the game as a sandbox. I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for points, right? So uh, I'm going to ruin the experience for them. I'm pretty sure of that. And then uh, secondly, I would rather play Too Many Bones, which I have sitting right here. I think that one's great. Uh, even though I think I'm going to be a little disappointed in it, I still want to try Picket Duty. And I still have other games I haven't even played. Like I have Comancheria I got from a GMT Christmas sale. And it's May 18th right now. May 19th. Um, and uh, uh, that Christmas sale was a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yes, there's so many. Uh, this is a nice first world problem to have. So um, first of all, thank you for watching. Stay awesome. And um, if you don't see any more videos, then uh, it's because I, I moved on. And um, I hope you're okay with that. Uh, if you were looking for, you know, how to win these missions, I hope I helped. I mean, maybe you're sitting there wondering, Jeff, how do you win those final three? Because I've been stumped on them too. Um, I I've already told you, uh, this one is not so bad. Because you can fly over mission spaces again and again and again until you get the ones you want. Okay? And then we just got plus three to all mission rolls. Uh, as long as the planets are revealed... And, and you can get there, uh, this is an easy win. I think this would be our next one, right? This one, earn at least five points from titles, is a complete crapshoot. And I honestly, um, like that collector one had three points on it. I mean, this one right here, that's a beautiful one to get. Because then all you have to do is just get five types of cargo. I mean, it's doable. That's what I'm trying to say. You could do this and get three of your five points all in one shebang. That's doable. But look at this one. I mean, you're only getting one. And there's only like four of these that are ever going to be drawn. So um, uh, you're going to need huge engines on this because you're going to have to move around the map to score points. So this one's going to be a big engine one. And then this one, I told you, you're going to need loath in the early game. And you're going to have to find a way to just camp somewhere, roll dice, and harvest cubes, right? 
and you're gonna wanna pick that ship that lets you harvest cubes, the Vagabond. So you're gonna go into an asteroid, ice asteroid, nebula, or debris field, doesn't matter which one, you're gonna spend all your energy and get as many of these cubes as you can. And then you're gonna go to Loth and sell them and then win on your first turn. That's what you're gonna do. And you're gonna you know, upgrade ship, you'll spend money on wealth, you'll get two points from that, right? Your ship and your wealth will get you two points and then you need to get your other three points from selling those cubes. And you can do it. Um, but like I said, it would you could still fail five to six times in a row because where's Loth? Loth is in those first seven tiles. I mean, what's the chances you're gonna get it at the start of the game? Uh, low, very low. And so how else do you score the five points then? Well, the next thing is, is you somehow, okay, let's say you have a dead planet. Then you can do the sifter thing. Well, the dead planet's only going to have four sifter tokens. So let's say there's four sifter tokens, and you somehow were able to fit all four of them on your ship, which is already a challenge. Then you sell them, or you go back to the kiln. and Because remember, you can instantly teleport back to the kiln. So you don't have to use movement points on that. So you go back, and let's say you get four points for that. How do you get your fifth point? Well, you need money. So uh, you get two exploration tokens maybe and get your fifth point that way. That, that would be how you would do it. And so um, uh, I think that actually this one might be more challenging than that one even. Um, and then the missions one, like I said, it, it, I mean, these are total luck things, these last three. Uh, how will these help? Well, if we do the mission one next, which is what I was gunning for, I would go for the plus five engine. In fact, I'm tempted to do that now and screw the plus three to mission rules. Um, I would get the plus five engine because that's going to help with all these missions and stuff. This rearm one is not very good. I don't, I mean, if you get to level three, it's good, but I still, uh, I mean, this is very helpful when you're trying to kill ships. Because if you'll notice, I, I kept running out of action cubes, but I still don't like it. Uh, and in this one down here, I don't like it all. In the campaign mode, they don't help you. Uh, you just never play to high enough points for this to matter. Um, ship abilities cost zero energy, so that means you can reroll dice all the time, or that means you can, you know, get extra energy all the time. Uh, it, it would work with some ships, because, you know, uh, slow leak here costs three energy to use. And this is saying that, you know, you wouldn't have to pay anything. Uh, and then you get a discount on, on buying upgraded ships. I mean, that could get you more points, I guess. Uh, I just don't know. I just don't know uh, if that's uh, worth the other things that you're getting. Um, but that's it in a nutshell. Uh, yeah, I would like to get out these other games and maybe play those. And... Um, I hope you don't mind, and I hope you at least enjoyed this series. Um, we started to get some really nice scores. I remember I was concerned about the minus six, and I was never going to be able to recover. And then, of course, this confirmed it for me, right? I was feeling really confident in that. And then, boom, these two happen. And then, boom, 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 boom. And uh, it's a guarantee that this one here, if you finish it, you're getting five points, and the AI is getting zero, because they're not even going to get to take a turn. Uh, these two, you know, could be anywhere from one to seven points. I would say uh, because you have to do specific missions and specific titles, you're going to have turns where you don't score any points at all because you're trying to, you know, set things up. Um, so, you know, and then, of course, how many times are we going to fail and get minus threes down here? It could be quite a few if you're playing honestly. Um, you know, this is the kind of thing where... Um, you know, when you're relying on a specific type of start, it's like, okay, we're going to start the game. Oh, here's my three tiles. Oh, I don't like any of them. I'm going to just quit and let's start a next game. You know you know what I mean? Uh, let's just keep starting over until you get the start that you want. It's like playing Civilization 1 through 6. It doesn't matter which game. Sid Meier, Civilization. That's all people do is they just restart over and over again until they get that perfect start. And then they talk about how easy the AI was. <laughs> oh, a bunch of chumps. Um... Okay, so uh, awesome components. Um, from a solitaire perspective, middle of the road game. 
uh, I think this is better multiplayer. I really do. Um, but with that said, the components are awesome. And from a solitaire perspective, there's not a lot of games like this. I mean, even Merchants and Marauders is not solitaire unless you do some user-made variant. Uh, so, you know, huge, huge uh, uh, accolades uh, for that. And um, the AI rules are at least here, and they are, um, I think the biggest challenge, and you guys probably noticed it in me, is some of these cards say, you know, go to the second player to your left. Well, okay, so that means I'm going to the kiln, or I'm, I'm going to uh, an AI, and like that rat one, all I have to do is just, you know, go next to the scoundrel and say, here you go. You know, and then it just goes out of the game. It doesn't really do anything. Whereas in a multiplayer game, it's like a hot potato and everybody's trying to give it to each other. I can see a lot of giggling and fun. You know, everybody's trying to jump, give these rats to each other. Whereas in this game, it's completely anticlimactic. And so um, this game would hugely benefit from an event and title deck that um, has solo, like solo specific events and solo specific uh, titles. Not to say that some of these aren't usable because like the Rikishi Comet is perfectly usable in a solo game, but the, it, this game would really benefit from, from having a distinction between solo and multiplayer. And some of, especially these missions, um, they're just not good solo. Um, and if, even if they are usable because the rules tell you how to handle it, it's still not fun. I mean, Going to a, an AI that always snitches on you, I mean, come on, it's, it's really not fun. Um, anyways, that's, uh, that's my assessment of this. Uh, this is definitely staying in my collection. Uh, it's not even a question. I think it's a, it's a great game. The fact that I was a Kickstarter backer and it had exclusives makes it even better. Um, my kids enjoy playing this one, so obviously I'm keeping it for that reason alone. Um, but there's nothing about this game I don't like. Uh, you know, I wish, I think the solo could be better, uh, but I've played a lot worse solo games. So, um, so we'll leave it at that. I, um, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay awesome.